Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to use some of the theorems that we've learned about angle sides uh, in triangles and we're going to apply them to specific problems. All right, the first problem, first problem says we have a figure XSTOW, it's equilateral and equiangular, and we want to prove the triangle uh, YTO. Uh, and let me mark up Y for you. YTO is going to be isosceles. Okay, so here we go. Given figure XSTOW is equilateral and equiangular, prove triangle YTO is isosceles. So again, the angle in question we're looking at is going to be YTO. That's what we want to prove as the isosceles triangle. Okay, so we're going to say, we're going to give... Uh, as our first statement, the given XSTOW is equilateral and equiangular. So that's given. And then we're going to say angle STO is congruent to WOT. So STO is congruent to WOT. And that's just by definition of an equiangular figure, all the angles in the figure are going to be congruent. Then I'm, I'm going to say that ST is congruent to WO. And again, that's as a reason definition of equilateral figure. So all the sides of the equilateral figure are congruent. Then I'm going to say TO is congruent to itself. So TO is congruent to itself. So you can see now that we have two triangles, WTO and SOT, or you can say STO and WOT that are congruent by side angle side. Okay, now we can say that um, angle WTO, so angle WTO, this angle here, and angle SOT, this angle here, are going to be congruent by CPCTC. Now, I can say at this point, if I have angles that are congruent and the sides opposite them, YT and YO, are going to be congruent. And therefore, I can say that triangle WT or YTO is isosceles. Um, by definition of an isosceles triangle, which is that at least two sides of the triangle are congruent. Okay, moving on to our second problem. We're given that triangle FED is an equilateral triangle. GE is perpendicular to DE. The measure of angle FEG is equal to X plus Y. The measure of angle D is equal to 3X minus 6. The measure of angle F is equal to 6Y plus 12. We need to find x, y, and the measure of angle f. Okay, so here we go. So I've marked up the diagram. I know that uh, triangle FED is equilateral. So let me mark up at least this last side. So FED is equilateral. Uh, GE is perpendicular to DE, which I've marked up. FEG is, x, is equal to x plus y. The measure of angle D is equal to 3x minus 6. The measure of angle F is equal to 6y plus 12. So FEG um, is going to be this angle here. So it should say measure of angle FEG, right, x plus y. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say I know that angle F here is equal to um, 180 minus two times the measure of angle D. I know that the measure of angle D and the measure of angle E are the same. Um, so <clears throat> I'm going to say 180 degrees, and I know that the sum of all the measures of the angles in a triangle are equal to 180 degrees. So I'm going to say that the angle F is equal to 180 degrees minus two times one of these angles. Now we haven't learned yet that in an equilateral triangle all the angles are congruent. So uh, we're going to use this as opposed to just stating that that angle measure is 60 degrees. So I have angle F is equal to 180 minus 2 times 3x minus 6, and I simplify that to uh, 192 minus 6x. Um, and then the next equation I have is that the measure of angle F is going to be equal to um, this, uh, the measure of angle F is going to be equal to 6y minus 12. So I have the measure of angle F, which I've already figured out here. It's 180 minus 2 times 3x minus 6. So it's 180 minus D and E is equal to F. 
And then I also know that they're giving me that f is equal to 6y plus 12. So I set this equation equal to the equation we just worked out for f uh, equal to each other. And I solve uh, for y in terms of x. So I have 6y plus 12 from this equation here. And I have 192 minus 6x from the first equation that we worked out. I solve for y. 6y is equal to 180 minus 6x y is equal to 30 minus x. So I'm going to use that y is equal to 30 minus x in my next step. But before I use uh, y is equal to 30 minus x, I need to uh, figure out an equivalent expression for y. And the way that I'm going to do that is I am going to take what I know about angle uh, FED and what I know about angle GED, and also what I know about angle FEG, and I'm going to set FEG plus D, angle D, which is congruent to angle E, equal to 90 degrees. So I know that angle D, actually I know that angle E plus FEG is equal to 90 degrees. But I also know that angle uh, F, E, D, and angle D are congruent. So I can say that angle D plus angle F, E, G is equal to 90 degrees. So I'm given that angle F, E, G is equal to X plus Y. So here I have X plus Y. And I'm given that angle D is equal to 3X minus 6. So I add angle F, E, G plus D together, and I should come up with 90 degrees. So I have X plus Y plus 3X minus 6 is equal to 90. And again, I'm going to solve for Y in terms of X and I end up with y is equal to negative 4x plus 96. Well, now I have two equations for y. One is y is equal to negative 4x plus 6, and the other is y is equal to 30 minus x, which I got from the prior sets of equations. And now I'm going to set the two equal to each other because I know that y is equal to y. I can say that 30 minus x is equal to negative 4x plus 96. So I simplify, I have 3x, I add 4x to both sides, 3x is equal to 66, subtract 30 from both sides, I find out that x is equal to 22. Well, if y is equal to 30 minus x, then y is equal to 30 minus 22, so y is equal to 8. And if y is equal to 8, and I know that f is equal to, angle f is equal to 6y plus 12, then I know that angle f is equal to 6 times 8, which is 48 plus 12, so the measure of angle F is equal to 60 degrees.